Hi there, and welcome to Exam AZ900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is Episode 30, Azure Firewall, and my name is Tim Warner. In the AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain, we are starting with Describe General Security and Network Security Features, drilling through Describe Azure Network Security. And as the title of this video suggests, our goal is to describe the functionality and usage of Azure Firewall. Take a look at the URL at the right, timw.info forward slash az900sg. This links out to Excel Online, where I'm hosting the workbook that contains the full table of contents for this series, as well as hyperlinks directly into each YouTube video. Now, I've been asked several times, why is this an incomplete series? Hopefully, by the time you're watching this later on in 2020, it will be complete, but I'm actually posting and publishing each installment as I record and edit them. So be patient. Let's get started. Let's take the following situation, and I'm actually going to base this situation on what we covered in the previous episode of this series on network security groups. Let's say that you're using NSGs to protect your virtual machines on your Azure virtual networks, and you're not getting enough flexibility. To that point, in the previous lesson, I gave an example of what if you need to make sure that your virtual machines can get out to certain internet sites, maybe to download software, but no other internet-based traffic. It's tough to do that because NSGs don't operate at that high of a level in the Open Systems Interconnection or OSI reference model. Also, NSGs can be problematic to troubleshoot, specifically if you've bound or associated an NSG at both the VM NIC level as well as the subnet level. Lastly, there are other firewall appliances available in the Azure Marketplace, but you may not want to hassle with that extra licensing and extra configuration setup. So I'm leading this situation down a particular path, obviously, and that is towards Azure Firewall, which is a stateful packet inspection firewall that's managed by Microsoft. Stateful means that the firewall is able to classify network communications as it passes through the firewall and as the firewall rule set evaluates those traffic streams and can keep track of them and understand that if an inbound rule on a such and so a port is enabled to such and so a VM, then the return traffic in that conversation, you do not have to create a corresponding rule for. Firewall is smart enough to figure that out. Some value propositions here is that the Azure Firewall has a much lower hassle factor as compared to deploying a third-party network virtual appliance or NVA in Azure. The Azure Firewall, like I said, is managed so it's got hyperscale and high availability baked right into it. It scales in the background as your traffic increases so you get predictable performance and you don't have to worry about manually scaling network virtual appliances. And then another huge advantage is that it's natively integrated with other Azure services. As I said, there's not a separate license that you have to worry about. And because Azure Firewall is a native Azure Resource Manager resource, you have turnkey integration with Azure governance like Azure Policy and Role-Based Access Control and Taxonomic Tagging and Log Analytics. All of that stuff is available. And let's not forget Azure Sentinel. You can absolutely track your Azure Firewall through Azure Sentinel. Here's a representative network topology, and it's very similar to what we'll be working with in the upcoming demo. In this case, we've got a virtual network where we have one workload subnet on which I've placed a virtual machine. Recall that the virtual machine gets its TCP IP configuration from the virtual network interface, and that the NSG is the default mechanism for protecting inbound and outbound traffic. Now, we're extending that protection here by deploying an Azure Firewall. When you deploy the firewall, it has to go into to a specific subnet called Azure Firewall subnet, and it needs to be a reserved subnet where only the Azure Firewall exists on it. Optionally, you can use Azure Bastion as a way to administer your virtual machines in Azure without ever having to worry about exposing your virtual machine directly to the internet. So in this topology, I've combined both Azure Firewall and Azure Bastion to give us really nice protection. Bastion giving us a secure way to manage the VM without ever exposing it directly to the internet. And we're also going to use what's called a route table to force all outbound traffic from that virtual machine through the firewall. And hopefully it makes sense why you'd have to do that. Just deploying the firewall is not going to instruct any virtual machines in your virtual network environment to start using it. You need to override Azure system routing, and that is the purpose of the route table. 
again, I always have to be careful. I sound like a broken record saying this because the Azure Fundamentals exam is targeted at both technical and non-technical audiences. If you are interested in really getting into the weeds here, check in my YouTube channel because I've done a separate deep dive video on Azure Firewall. Actually, I've done a couple of videos on Azure Bastion in my channel also. And of course, the Azure Security Administrator, the AZ500 certification exam, deals with Azure security as an entire skill set. So I wanted to offer that to you as well. So let's get into that brief demo. All right, in this demonstration, we'll look at the basics of Azure Firewall. And we're starting looking at this virtual machine I have, my VM2. And I want you to see if we go to networking, how it's equipped. We can see, first of all, there's no public IP. So this virtual machine is not exposed directly to the internet. It's located, as you can see, where my mouse pointer is on a virtual network called my VNet and on a subnet on that virtual network called my backend subnet. We've got an NSG rule set here, but those are just the default rules rules in the previous lesson I told you about the default rules and you'll remember actually I'll show you by switching to outbound port rules that one of the built-in rules this allow internet outbound explicitly allows all traffic destined for the internet however I've deployed Azure firewall onto this my vnet virtual network and I haven't created any rules and remember the way a firewall works is unless you explicitly create allow traffic rules that traffic will all be denied by default and we can demonstrate that by connecting to the VM I'll go to overview connect and I've also deployed a bastion host which is again is a managed jump box and we can come into it directly in the browser here I'll authenticate with a credential that I know is good on that virtual machine and our bastion session passes us in here and it takes us into I was already working in this session as you can see let me make the browser a little bit smaller to show you context the bottom taskbar is my actual machine that I'm teaching on and then this upper one is the my VM2 virtual machine and I attempted to go to Google and it says that the action is denied because no rules matched. Let's say that we wanted to configure this server to automatically go to powershellgallery.com to download business software. PowerShellGallery.com. And again, that's denied by default because I'm routing traffic through the Azure Firewall. I created a route table that says any outbound traffic, do not pass go, do not collect $200, go to Azure Firewall. And as I said, I haven't yet created any rules on that firewall, but we're going to fix that up right now by first browsing to the firewall's blade. I'm not going to get into the weeds here because Azure Fundamentals is a fundamentals exam. I do want to repeat one more time. Look elsewhere in my YouTube channel. I have a video on Azure Firewall that does go to a pretty good degree of depth. So if we look at the firewall, it's a managed appliance, and we can get right down to the good stuff here and go to rules. There's three types of rule collections that we can make. I'm going to go to application rule. This speaks to the heart that this is a full stack firewall that can do things that network security groups can't. Remember that NSGs function on the basis of source and destination IP address, source and destination port number, and protocol. What we're going to do is create an application rule collection. I'll call this app rule collection one. Give it a priority of 200 and the action here is going to be allow. It's either allow or deny. And I'm going to come down under target FQDN and create a rule named allow PS gallery. The source type can be IP address or IP group. I'm just going to use the subnet address that the virtual machine is located on. And I happen to know what that is here, so I'll type it in. It's 10.0. Dot one dot zero slash 24 and your protocol port this is a comma separated list I'm gonna do HTTP or HTTPS and for target FQDNs again this is a comma separated list but I'm just gonna do PowerShell gallery.com and when I press tab an evaluation takes place and if your choice is valid in the Azure resource manager schema you get a check otherwise if you put an invalid option you would get a X a red X that tells you that. I think that's all we need to do here. We've got our name priority, our action, and we've created a target FQDN rule that will explicitly allow traffic from the subnet that my VM is located on, and it will allow connections over HTTP or HTTPS to PowerShellGallery.com. That looks pretty good. So we'll wait a moment to let the rule update on the firewall. While we're waiting for that update to take place, let me just quickly jump out to 
route tables just to quickly show you what that resource looks like. Again, a route table is a way to customize your routing paths in your Azure virtual network. I've created a single route here called firewall route. And if we look at it, it says that the address prefix 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, that's a shorthand notation for any destination. The next hop type would be, there's a bunch of different choices, but for Azure Firewall, you choose virtual appliance. And then the next hop address is the private IP address of the Azure Firewall. So I just looked that up. And once you create your route table and your route, the last thing you need to do is associate it to one or more subnets. And I just simply browsed to the subnets blade, clicked associate, and browsed to my VNet virtual network, and I selected the my backend subnet subnet because that's where my my VM2, a lot of my's going on, is located. All right, so to test this out from our my VM2 connection in Azure Bastion, let's attempt a connection to PowershellGallery.com, shall we? There we go. Excellent. Now, because we created the rule only for PowerShell Gallery, that should mean a connection to another site. For example, Google.com should be blocked, and it is. So there it is, some of the basic elements of Azure Firewall in action. Learning resources. I've picked out some good ones in the Azure documentation. First, the Azure Firewall docs at timw.info forward slash nf1. Next, if you want some more details on the different types of rule sets supported by Azure Firewall, timw.info forward slash nf2. And then if you're interested in network address translation, this is a way that some Azure administrators use to securely manage their virtual machines from across the internet without having to use, say, Azure Bastion or another kind of jump host. Now, NAT is controversial because it's really relying upon what's called security by obscurity. Nonetheless, if you want to learn about DNAT filtering or destination NAT filtering, it's timw.info forward slash nf3. Awesome. Another lesson down. Congratulations and thank you so much. Our next episode, we're continuing our trolley ride through Azure Security. We'll look at the product Distributed Denial of Service or DDoS Protection. You can find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my full length courses are in the Pluralsight library at timw.info forward slash ps. My website is techtrainertim.com and I wish you all the best. Happy studying. I'll see you around.